with Bitcoin now picking up some steam following multiple weeks of downward price action. We'll look at the underlying data to see if the bull market really is back on or if this is just a bear market rally. Today we'll be doing some Bitcoin on-chain and data analysis to see if the Bitcoin bull market really has resumed and where better to start than that unrealized profit and loss chart we have here on BitcoinMagazinePro.com. And as we can see over the past few weeks, Bitcoin has dropped from over $100,000 to beneath $80,000, but we have seen a slight uptick recently. And this has resulted in many metrics that look to have pointed towards a local low being set around that 76, 75, $77,000 figure around there. To now look like that was the low, we have cemented in the lows for this downward move, and we are potentially now marching on to new highs. So first and foremost, like we can see, the net unrealized profit and loss has actually jumped back from this anxiety, potentially optimistic, but given the feeling and sentiment across most of social media, it was definitely an anxious feeling, back into belief, where people are maybe now getting a little bit excited again about the potential for BTC. What we can do is if we just zoom in over the current cycle here, it is interesting to see throughout this bull cycle, every time Bitcoin has dropped to around this level, it has indicated the local low before BTC did have a rally higher. So it is interesting to see we've once again done that. And we have now just slightly reclaimed into this slightly higher region on this chart. So some bullish optimism there. And of course, if we look at the MVRVZ score. This is similar to the NUPL. They're both taking into account the realized price or the realized cap of BTC, which is the average accumulation or cost basis for all BTC on the network and that relationship between that price and the underlying price of BTC. We can see the MVRVZ score, which has historically been one of the most accurate metrics for calling BTC market peaks and bottoms, is considerably beneath where we consider overheated territory. We've dipped to beneath two on this Z score, which historically gives a pretty good risk to reward, especially if you can accumulate at these levels during bull cycles. Again, if we look to the previous 2017 cycle and look to when we had these pretty stark retracements, again, both of these were absolutely unbelievable accumulation opportunities during that cycle. And this looks somewhat similar. Of course, if we look to 2020, that cycle where we had the big COVID dip, of course, this dipped back into this green zone down here. So none of these indicate that there isn't the potential for BTC to move lower. Of course, that's always a possibility, but it is just interesting to see many of the similarities between the 2017 cycle and the confluence we're seeing from most of these metrics that a bottom has been put in and we should be anticipating some more bullish price action going forward, especially if we look at something like the spent output profit ratio, which is more of a counter trading indicator. Once we see a huge amount of these red spikes to the downside, it indicates that people are actually selling BTC at a loss on their position and considering recently we were seeing a big cluster of losses realized for BTC holders when we'd only retrace kind of 20% or so indicates that a lot of the selling was probably done by people who had bought BTC above $100,000 and maybe got a little bit spooked and scared and had a bit of an early capitulation. We've all been there, but like we said, once we start seeing these red signals, it actually often indicates a good opportunity to potentially accumulate BTC, especially during bull cycles. If we again look to 2017, we'll notice a lot of similarities and parallels in the data. What we can see is every time we had these big spikes of realized losses on the network, this indicated again, perfect buying opportunities throughout BTC's bull cycle. And again, if we look at something like the value of days destroyed, we can see this is weighting BTC transactions by the amount that is being moved and the amount of time that has been held. So this is really weighting those BTC transactions from the network's largest and most experienced holders. And what we can see is when this spikes massively to the upside, indicates a lot of these more experienced, smart money, sophisticated investors are beginning to take profit on their positions. But when it's in this green zone, it indicates that they're seeing on their hands, they're anticipating higher prices and definitely aren't looking to move any BTC. And what we can see is this has dipped back into these green levels down here, which indicates an extremely cooled off sentiment and feeling in the market from these more experienced holders. We very rarely see this value days destroyed multiple dip back down into this green level during a BTC bull cycle. If we look to 2017, it only happened once and for a very brief period of time. Whereas in this cycle, it's already happened three times, which really indicates that investors, as much as they have already taken some profit as BTC surpassed $100,000 and last year around $74,000, now they're looking to the market and thinking to themselves, there is absolutely no sense in taking profit at these levels. BTC is primed for considerably higher and it, it'd be foolish to begin selling at these prices. So this is another really bullish metric we can look towards. And it really reiterates if we go to this chart here, 
the sentiment that we're seeing from long-term holders in that we're now seeing the long-term holder supply increasing. So not only are we not seeing as much T profit taking from these large more experienced BTC holders we're now seeing the opposite we're seeing active accumulation we're seeing the amount of BTC being held by people who are likely going to hold BTC for the long term and at least for considerably higher prices begin rapidly increasing if I just zoom in over the current cycle here we can see a large part of why BTC struggled above hundred thousand dollars is because a lot of people who had bought BTC years ago probably at considerably lower prices were aggressively taking profit which of course Bitcoin, all markets are just a factor of supply and demand. If there's increased supply, people are selling BTC and demand is decreasing. That's going to be reflected in the price action. But now we're seeing demand increasing. We're seeing long-term holders wanting to accumulate BTC. And we're seeing the supply available for new market participants. One BTC starts getting some bullish momentum back again, begin to dwindle. This is just, again, a consequence of supply and demand economics is that it's going to work in our favor. But when are we going to see potentially some new users coming back into the space? Well, if we look at something like the Fear and Greed Index, we can still see we are at a fearful sentiment, even though BTC has recovered nicely. And really, we've only seen a, let's call it a 30% retracement, which during a Bitcoin bull cycle is completely typical. During 2017, this happened on, I think, 11 separate occasions. During 2020, again, it happened on a number of different occasions before BTC's peak in that cycle but we can see we had values on the fear and greed index as low as 10 in the past few weeks which is as low as we saw as BTC had crashed around 60% during its bear cycle last time and had dropped very rapidly from over $30,000 to beneath $20,000 we had that same sentiment as Bitcoin dropped from $100,000 to $87,000 so a little bit of a rationality in the market and this is very much reflected in the fear and greed index and the lack of accumulation from new users entering the market but this is where smart money sophisticated investors people looking at the data really can take advantage and gain an edge in the market if we just go to the one year hold at hodl wave again this is very much in line with the long-term holder supply where people that have been holding BTC for at least a one-year period are again not selling they're waiting for considerably higher prices and this is in contrast to something like the short-term holder MVRV what we can see here is this indicates that new market participants are actually at a loss on their position as this MVRV is beneath a value of one and if we zoom in what we can actually see is the short-term holder realized price has actually increased to around $93,000. And what we can see as this has been increasing, as price has been actually beneath this, which isn't usually what you'd expect. This indicates that short-term holders aren't really taking advantage of lower prices. In fact, they've probably been selling BTC that they previously accumulated. Typically what we see is when this is decreasing, when price is beneath this, Usually you see new market participants accumulating BTC, taking advantage of some lower prices. But as this has been increasing as prices beneath this, indicates that short-term holders have been the ones that have mainly been selling recently, which again makes sense considering we've seen long-term holder supply increasing and generally just a short-term outlook and sentiment taking over the market. Especially if we look at something like the Bitcoin funding rates, which recently has been negative for an extended period of time. Well, I say negative for an extended period of time. We've had multiple instances of this being negative over the past few weeks, which again indicates a very short term outlook on BTC. People are actively trying to short the market, betting on further downside after a 30% retracement during a bull cycle. It's all just, all the data almost always points towards a majority of new market participants being wrong, and this is no exception. Typically, again, this is a very much a counter trading indicator similar to the spent output profit ratio. This actually bottomed out right as BTC was bottoming out. And now it's at a very healthy, sustainable level. So hopefully this can stay at very neutral levels of funding, which hopefully would prevent very excessive leverage and would hopefully reassure and reaffirm a more spot driven rally. But looking at the minor data as well, pretty much everything we're going to look at today reaffirms the bias that everything is looking very positive for BTC. And I say bias, of course, I'm long term bullish on BTC, but all of my decisions are completely reflected by what is happening in the data. I try and take all personal opinion, feeling everything out of it. But when all the data is looking this good, it's hard not to be even more bullish than usual. What we can see is the poor multiple is around a value of one, which is actually pretty healthy and typical especially at this point in a BTC bull cycle what we usually see is a big rally from bear cycle lows the BTC halving event some color consolidation sorry beneath a value of one a rally back above and then a retouch of this value of one exactly like we saw in 2017 and exactly like we've seen in this cycle here with a bear cycle ending 
big rally halving event consolidation beneath one rally back above come back retest of a value of one and hopefully this will signify the start of more bullish price action for a sustained period of time and alongside that we can see the bitcoin hash ribbons indicator which is looking at the two moving averages of the hash rate the 30 day and the 60 day and as you can see from the chart this has historically been one of the most bullish buy signals for btc once we see the short term moving average crossing back above the longer term moving average and if we just zoom in on current price action what we can see is we have just seen a hash ribbons cross from this short moving average above the longer term moving average so once we get just a slightly longer sustained period of positive price action this will flash a bullish bitcoin buy signal which as we can see again historically has been one of the most accurate ones for btc and alongside this one as well, we can see the advanced NVT signal, which is looking at the network transactions in relation to the value of the network. We can see once this crosses beneath this lower standard deviation band and crosses back above, it indicates a BTC buy signal. If we just zoom in over the current cycle, again, we can see every time this has happened, like here when BTC was at 40,000 or when BTC was at 50 well beneath $60,000 before we rallied up again and recently we've had a few instances of this crossing above which haven't actually played out too well but now we've crossed back above this middle deviation band indicating that there's a lot more bullish on-chain activity and the network likely isn't overvalued anymore especially if we look at something like the active address sentiment indicator which is not only looking at the transactional value of on-chain transactions but the underlying network utilization in terms of active users and what we can see is this orange line representing the 28-day change in price action once it crosses back above this lower green deviation band of network activity it indicates a btc buy signal and we are right on the cusp once again of having an active address sentiment indicator buy signal flash but we've actually seen these two deviation bands moving to the upside recently as the amount of network utilization again has been ticking up more people are using btc long-term holders are accumulating at an incredibly increased rate and what else do we have? I've gone through so many charts today. If we look at the Bitcoin everything indicator to hopefully try and summarize most of these metrics up together, this is taking into account not just on-chain data, but macroeconomics such as the global M2 money supply, short-term factors, technical factors, etc. We can see that this is pretty much at rates that we very rarely see during a BTC bull cycle. But when we do see them, They've historically been amazing opportunities to accumulate BTC. Well, we can see again, if we just mark on the chart, every time this has happened during a BTC bull cycle, we've reached our slightly dipped beneath this level. We can see it happened on a couple of occasions in 2017, each of them indicating a generational great risk reward opportunity for BTC and excluding the bid COVID 2020 dump when it happened during that cycle again both times indicated great opportunities to accumulate BTC before rallying higher and even in this cycle again once we crossed back above this as BTC rallied and dipped beneath each time we've actually crossed back beneath this and especially once we crossed back above this on this metric it has indicated a great opportunity to accumulate BTC before rallying substantially higher so another bullish indication there but one thing we do need to acknowledge is, especially in light of the recent downturn, one of the main influences on the BTC price action is the underlying performance of US equities and stock indexes like the S&P 500. And recently we've seen a rally in the S&P, which has of course led to more bullish price action for Bitcoin. But if we are to see this start turning over, some more uncertainty in traditional markets, tariffs, trade wars, etc., Bitcoin is likely going to struggle. As much as we're seeing all of this data pointing towards incredibly bullish price action going forward for BTC, we do have to acknowledge that the correlation between BTC and traditional markets is incredibly strong. Until we see a sustained decoupling from Bitcoin, we are kind of just at the will of what traditional stock markets will do. So hopefully now this isn't just a bullish turn of events for BTC, but markets in general, if we look to like we can see in the M2 money supply and the US dollar strength index, they do give us some optimism that this isn't just gonna be a short-lived bounce or a bear market rally, and things can hopefully turn around for a more sustained period of bullish price action. So just to summarize, Bitcoin has recently rebounded from the local lows it set beneath $80,000 and is now looking like it have the potential to run significantly higher in the very near future. And from a macro on-chain data perspective, there is absolutely no reason to be bearish here with all indicators pointing towards sustained bullish price action from here on out. However, we do need to acknowledge that the market is still very much dependent on the performance of the US stock market, especially indexes like the S&P 500. We can see an incredibly strong correlation between performance in the two assets there so if we do see a sudden switch back to a more risk off sentiment in traditional markets it would likely result in at least some more choppy 
consolidationary price action for BTC or at the very worst more downside price action but what we can see is bull markets do take time especially this one we've not seen BTC have these big volatile moves we've seen this step up in price action big move to the upside consolidation big move to the upside recently big move to the downside so really we can expect probably some consolidation I doubt BTC is going to rally in the coming days to new all-time highs but if we can just take things step by step make new support rally back into previous ranges and just show some general strength for a more sustained period of time it does give us some optimism that the bull market is very much back on and we can expect a hopefully more positive continuation of 2025. If you like this video then please visit bitcoinmagazinepro.com where our analytics help you to cut through the noise to make data-driven informed decisions about bitcoin. With over 150 live charts, personalized indicator alerts, private training view scripts and more, API access all for a fraction of the standard industry price. Let me know your thoughts on BTC potentially rebounding to higher prices do you think the local lows are in from a data perspective i definitely have many reasons to be bullish and have been accumulating as much as i can at lower prices but do you think this is true do you think we could potentially see lower prices and this is just a bear market rally as i said let me know in the comments below and on social media i look forward to reading and replying to them thank you all very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one